Hi, hi, everyone. Hello. <laughs> so I'm a little late today. Yep. I have to wind my bobbin and do a few things before we get started. Okay. So if you're watching, let me know where you're watching from. And we'll start talking in a minute. Okay. Is that good? All the, all the people from the challenge. Let's see if my light's too dark. So this is like a bunch of things. We're celebrating and wrapping up the, the challenge. We are going to talk about this embroidery thing I'm doing. It's like a, a new upcycle. It's not new, right? But it's another way to upcycle uh, shirt. And, and then also about the Remakers program. If you have any question, let me, you know, ask away. Because I'm going to be here while I do this. I'll be talking to you all. So... And for now, I'm just, uh, I have to do my bobbin because I'm doing this embroidery thing and it has to be uh, a certain bobbin, a certain thread, which, you know, I've tried with uh, regular thread, but then I realized that embroidery thread is better. And I, I found recently, I found this one that's um, rayon thread and it's awesome. So I... I tested and it's pretty good. So that's the one we're going to do today. Let's see. This is new. I just got it. I was testing the white one. Are you all good? Say hello. Can you hear me? If you are on Facebook or YouTube, can you hear? Just confirm because you know my audio is always crazy. Just say, hey, I can hear you. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. Oh, great. Alexandra. Hi. Anna. Okay. The girls are here. All right. <laughs> you can hear well. All right. Hi. Hello. Hello. Instagram. Okay. Awesome. 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 Loud and clear. Pilar, you're here. Wow. <laughs> I'm so excited. Awesome. <laughs> Hi, Susan. <laughs> So I'm going to do, let me just wind the bobbin because it's probably going to be a little noisy and then we can start and I'll show you what I'm going to do and, and then we start the process, right? There. Okay. Oh, no, Leah, you are the sweetest person for saying that. <laughs> oh. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Tegan. Tegan is her name. Is it, is it a real name, Tegan? You guys got me crazy with the, um, the handles on YouTube and Instagram. <laughs> So this process is a way to just do the collar, the collar, right, of the shirt, which, you know, it's a way to change. And I was thinking, like, they probably want to learn this because it's uh, we're playing with the collars all week and then doing the change on the shirt and all. And this is a great way to just change a shirt real quick. It's not quick, but it's like a different thing. You change the game completely, right? So um, I think you enjoy it. Let's see. I like it. I, it's not like, and here's the thing. It's not like I'm a, I'm an ex expert on this. I really just, you know, you've seen me doing, I do like free motion embroidery a lot. And this is just like something I've tried and it worked and I really enjoy. So, okay. Opa. The thing about this thread is like, it's not a, a strong, so it's not good for sewing, right? It's just good for uh, embroidery really, because it doesn't hold it's rayon. It's so cool. It's 100% uh, rayon. I the brand is Robinson Anton. I think it's a new brand. I saw at Joanne's because I was there to buy something else. And then they had a, um, a display thing, you know, and they like do like some embroidery in the middle of the store, like a promotion. And then they had this and I asked the late, and the reason I chose this one is because it's not shiny. Usually when you find embroidery thread, it's too shiny and I don't like it. So let me place it here. 
I'll try the machine and then we get started. And um, hi, Kaylee. <laughs> this machine is cool because it has like an extra thing here where you can pass the thread on your embroidery and holds it even like further than the regular tension and all the, the parts. Um, and then I'll, I'll start showing you the process of how you change the color. Oh, I think it's okay. So let's do it. So here's the thing. A shirt. Oh, let me grab the shirt because I left it hanging on the door. So here's the shirt. And then, so then I was like, I need some white fabric. And I thought, how can I have white fabric? And then I realized I have like, I had this like camisole thing that I've been saving because I like the embroidery. There's like applique thing. Look. And so I was like, I, I guess I can cut that. And now it's a cute top. Look. <laughs> But then I have, it's, it's really like a, a nightgown. And then I use the, I'm going to use the left, the bottom part as the fabric for my collar. So let me put the table view for you, which is probably going to be dark because everything is white. And then the, my camera just like reads the white and make the light dark. Okay, let's see if we can make that any... I'm gonna put this light here. Let me, yeah, I think this helps, right? Yeah. So this shirt, this is just like a regular shirt, button up. And just like in the challenge, like we did, but easier than we did in the challenge, I removed the collar. Oh, you're on Instagram, you have to see too, right? Let me, I'll put it lower like this so you see better. So uh, on the during the challenge, I we really removed it with the, the uh, seam ripper, right? But in this case, we don't really need to remove it, like to be like, it doesn't need to be well finished because we can just place it over the thing. If you wanna do that, it's okay. But look, I removed the collar then I have the, because I need the shape of the collar to do that. I'm going to create a new collar and then add to the shirt later. And the shirt, I might do like some crazy embroidery all over, but then it's going to cost a million dollars because it takes time. <laughs> or I'm, I just wear it myself. Um, then what I do is I transfer the collar into a paper. You know, the shape of my collar, I just like trace it around. And then I also put on myself and see like how that looks on me, right? How it's the shape of the collar really like around, let me move my hair. Um, and then I calculate like, oh, it could go lower. It could, you know, you guys like, like long, those big collars that are trendy now, you can also do that. You can just like make like a big thing and then uh, you know, trade and cut it and then add it to the shirt, change the color. Or also somebody once asked me to do, but then I realized there's a lot of tutorials already, but they asked me if I wanna do a tutorial showing how to make those like extra large colors that are changing now. And that would be a way to do it, okay? You, can, you don't even need to um, play, put back on the shirt because they're removable, removable colors, right? So you could do that and then you put a little button here and you can wear like that with the button. Or just, uh, I've seen like, uh, they do a ribbon and then you tie it here, which is cute too. So you could do that if, if they're removable or a fixed collar, just place it back. I think mine will just uh, sew back on my shirt, okay? Uh, so then I trace it there. And then from there I make, yeah, so when I try here, I see how much longer I want, how bigger, where, you know, and it's experimental. So it's always like, oh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and then I did one and it was cool, but then I thought it should be a little bigger. 
So I'm doing this other one, but I'm, I don't know if it's going to be perfect yet. You know, it's not, it's not an Oscar. So we're just trying to make something different. And, and then from there, I can try again, right? Then when I have this, I have this original shape, then I enlarge the little, or you could do huge if you want. And then from there, I drew on the paper the kind of design I want, because I'm going to embroider that uh, there. And I like, so I'm taking this course from this Brazilian guy who is a huge talent. And he teaches, um, it's called Richelieu, Richelieu, which is called, in the US, I guess they call it cut work, embroidery cut work. So it's when you do like empty <clears throat> shapes. I wish I had my sample here, but they cut it out, right? So it's, it's like eyelets, you know, English um, embroidery, things like that. So that's the kind of um, um, thing that I'm learning from him. And I'm super excited because, uh, you know, it's hard, <laughs> but it has to do with the work I do. So it's like giving me ideas and stuff, right? And so, and I've done like that, but not like as well as they do. Uh, and my goal is, is to do like cut work with like eyelets and open stuff. So, but this time I'm just going to do the edges of it. And so, so what I mean is instead of, you can see it, but I drew here some, see like a, a pencil. And uh, so I'm going to embroider and then cut it out the edges. And then it's, I did like kind of like a garden flower kind of thing. And so the flowers will be like, you know, the, the color would be like flowers, you know, like the petals of the flowers, something like that, something like the garden thing. So it would be cool to do colorful. I'm just doing black and white uh, to test. All right. And then to show you. So then after I kind of like, I didn't transfer the, I drew uh, more or less the drawing I want on this paper. And then from here, I kind of do like a transfer to the fabric, but I don't really transfer to the fabric. You can like trace it. I didn't trace it. I just uh, drew again on the fabric. And that's when I used the camisole. I was like, I need white fabric. I didn't ha have like a uh, yardage or anything. So I grabbed this one. And so I kind of drew the, so I transfer the shape of the collar to the fabric. And then I kind of sort of like drew the, the garden again. All right. If you're giving love, thank you. <laughs> you guys, please also share, right? Share my, uh, the video with your friends. If you think some of your friends would enjoy this, please share. Let them know that. Um... Oh, thank you. I love the shirt too. It's one of my favorite shirts. <laughs> um, I didn't make it. It's vintage, but you know, I love it. It's silk. It's very nice. So sh please share. Give a like. And then the, you know, the algorithm sees and, and brings more people. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so then after I drew, I um, place it on the embroidery hoop. Look. And now I'm going to embroider it around and see how it goes. But the thing is, it has to be very tight. And one thing I learned from my, my teacher is that it has to be as tight as a, um, uh, what do you call, drum. And this is not a drum yet, so it has to be even more, even tighter. And sometimes I use a stabili stabilizer, which is this uh, uh, thing that you can put in the back. This time I'm not doing because I'm doing two layers of fabric. This fabric is kind of thin, so I'm using two. But uh, if I'm doing only one, I will do the stabilizer. Do you have any questions? <laughs> oh, hi, Tracy. Thank you for joining, guys. Oh, Tracy, by the way, you've been trying to join my program. This time is the, is the time. You like the um, upcycle things, and uh, now there's a, a great payment plan. And the old course, the old is not old, right? It's like two times. I did just two times. You can, uh, the course is complete inside of the program. So it's like a big thing that you can learn from beginning to how make your wardrobe. The course is in there and you can take on your time, uh, your pace. You have access for the whole year and uh, you can, uh, and then every month I'm going to bring a new 
upcycled project, but it will be like, you know, not like live like this. I'll do like short videos and then I'll do support. We have like a community that you can ask questions anytime. And um, we'll do a Zoom live, you know, every month to ask to, so people can ask questions. And it's very cool. It's very like complete. I haven't heard anything else like that. It's called the Wardrobe School Remakers. And it closes in two days. So if you want to sign up, go sign up. There's no reason to not sign up now. <laughs> it's uh, affordable. It's awesome. You have access for the whole year. Uh, if you guys make stuff to sell, it's a great way for you to, you know, you can make small batches of the creations. You know, say like, I'm making this. You can go and make the same thing. If there's templates, you can use it. I'll give you templates you can use. Yeah, and then you can uh, sell that. So even, if, you know, it's like 50 bucks a month. Uh, if you pay in 12 times and you can just sell one thing for 50 bucks and pay for it. Okay. The girls in my group, they're like, ah, oh, my friends want to, you know, the shirts that they, they learn for free in the challenge, uh, their friends want, they want to sell and all. So, you know, I'm just saying guys, it's your opportunity now. And when it closes, it closes. Okay. So don't wait. Uh, you ask what I'm showing. I'm showing how to embroider this collar. I'm, I'm changing, I'm upcycling a shirt by creating a new collar, an embroidered collar. And I'm going to try to see if this is working for my machine. Because I tried doing this job on another machine and it wasn't very good. Oh, look, now it's very drum-like. So now it's ready. Let me grab the... So a machine. And so there is a foot for this. And it's funny because like here in the US, we have so many gadgets and things. And like I have a million machines, a million things because, you know, it's easy to find used stuff and it's affordable. And so we have this foot, right? <laughs> and it's embroidery foot. This is the Bernina one. So it's a, it's called the darning foot. But all, you know, Singer has, a, you can always buy this for like very cheap on Amazon and all. It's the darning foot. And, um, uh, but then in Brazil, because I'm taking this course from the guy in Brazil, they don't use anything. They have the machine. He's like, oh, I never changed the needle. I just use, and I'm like, what kind of needle do you use? You use a special needle? He's like, I use needle size 14. That's it. And I barely change it. <laughs> you know, they just make it so more, more simple, right? And so for this, I'm not going to use the needle now, or the foot, but uh, I recommend you to do use the to go ahead and get a foot if you don't have, because it's dangerous for your, for your finger. I'm always in the, my mom has once uh, stitched her finger and it wasn't fun. So just saying. Remake her monthly. Does it? No. It is open. Oh, I mean, I know it's open. Go, when you click to sign up, just click to sign up. When you go to the checkout page, you have the two options of payment. Let me see. Now you got me worried because... Um, but other people... No, it, it's working. What do you see? Please let me know. Other people sign up. Although today I only had um, full price, but, you know, like I paid the whole thing, but now it's, let me see here. Get in touch. No, look, I'm going to go on, a, on a incognito and then see. Hi, Rob. <laughs> Rob, can you check for me, please? My pay, my sign, go to my, um, pretend you're going to sign up for my course. Go to the bio and then click on sign up and try to pay monthly. Look, I'm trying right now. Yeah, I, I can, it's working for me. If, why don't you send me a message in the uh, UMK 
W33. <laughs> Send me a message and I'll help you because it's really not, uh, it, should, it should work, it's working here. I went to an incognito page. Did you go to the link on my uh, Instagram? All right, so if anything, I'll check again in a minute, okay? Let's start the embroidery. Oh no, don't go on my website. Go on the Instagram bio. And because that one that you say, that's probably the sole and essential wardrobe or something else, or the remakers monthly. That's that's the the whole uh, the monthly thing. Yeah, so here's the thing. If you are you want to sign up for remake wardrobe school remakers, which covers all, there's like two bonus, there's three bonuses. There's the monthly projects, there's the sew and essential wardrobe, that's the complete the complete course inside, and uh, how to sell your creations bonus, and the other bonus is how to tailor your clothes. So you want to go to that page, go to my bio. And then there it will be taken to the, my website is funny. I keep working on it and sometimes the links are, I'll get there sometime. <laughs> I'm great at sewing, not great at technology. <laughs> so how am I going to do this is with the zigzag. And first I'm going to test on a, like on the side. Let me put it here so you guys see. Yeah. Now it's probably too bright, huh? Like that, I think you can see it, right? Though, yeah, Rob, it works, right? On Instagram, all right, welcome. <laughs> welcome to Remakers. I'll, I promise I'll fix the website in a couple of weeks or something, it's just not... Um, and in fact, that remakers thing, I thank you so much for letting me, letting me know that because the remakers is the way this platform works is like each course, each part of this, it's one course and each course has a page that you can sign up. But I didn't work on the remakers monthly page because it's not, it's, it's already inside of the remake, the wardrobe school remakers, you know, so it shouldn't be available on the website. That's the thing. It should be secret. But now I learned that it is. So <laughs> it's really, that's one part of the whole remakers. I hope it's not too confusing. Okay, so now I'm, uh, and so one tip to do this is whenever you're going to embroider something like that, you want to bring the bottom thread to the top. You don't want to have um, the, you know, you don't start stitching when the thread is down there because it's going to jam. So you always bring the, so I have here on, on top of my hoop, the two threads, and then I put the needle down and then always remember to put your uh, foot down because it's, um, if you don't, and then it jams as well. My friend Tiago, who is trying to do uh, free motion, he's like, why is it like that? I'm like, are you putting the foot down? <laughs> Susan, for the remake, monthly when should we anticipate the first project oh yeah it's, it's probably next week i'm sending you guys uh, the email on monday with the whole calendar calendar but i think the first one is probably i'm trying to figure out because first i have to hear from you guys what is the best time for the live classes and all but the first project is going to drop probably next week and then we schedule the first zoom so we can meet each other and be all together, okay? But watch for the email on Monday when I have the whole um, tomorrow, right? When I know more about the calendar because I have to hear from my editor when the, the videos are available. Is that good? All right, so then I did a few stitches just to start the, uh, the ball rolling, right? And then I, I'm testing now. So I go forward and back. And it looks like it's working well. 
my tension is then you have to adjust the tension i recommend you to do the tension before you start doing this on a regular fabric you know just in a piece of fabric so you see uh, my teacher also recommends that the tension for this kind of stuff has to be tight so the zigzag gets really like holds the fabric ali the hoop yeah so i'm not using a foot that's what i was saying like i do recommend to use a foot but in this case i'm not but when I do use a foot, is this one. Uh, and Singer has, so this is for Bernina, but the Singer has similar ones. And it has like a spring inside and see how it, it, it gets like smaller. So I always pull it, I push it with my finger. And then it goes up and then I put the, it's a little, it depends on the machine also. Some machines have more room and some have less. This one has more and that's why I'm using it. There is also another thing that I learned recently is that the the hook so the hook of the machine is where the the hold on the hook of the machine is where the bobbin goes right and uh, is that thing that turns if you look when you put the thing when you're sewing the hook is turning if uh, rag, most of machines have an oscillating hook that goes back and forth, it oscillates. And then some machines have what, what they call the rotary hook. And that hook go, turns one way all the time, not uh, oscillating, it's rotary, rotary, right? And the rotary hook is better for embroidery. It just is easier for apparently like the stitch is better, it doesn't, it doesn't jam as much. And it's true, this one is rotary and I'm using for that. So if you plan on doing embroidery, you can look for a machine like that. Yes, the close up for Instagram, here it is. They have different ones, I like this type. They have some that are uh, wider. They have also some that are open in the front, but that's pretty much it. See, this is the Bernina, so that's how you attach there. But the singer will have, um, I have one here, actually. For, and this is not only for singers, for all low shank machines. It attaches to the, the foot there and see the, so this loop thing is where the needle goes through. Here it is, Instagram, for our, right? This is for regular machines, you just put it there. And then goes like that. It's free motion. Yeah, free motion quilting. Uh, there's this old one that I'm dying to have. It's like a spring. If you look on YouTube, the, the people from India, they make amazing embroidery. And they have, uh, the, and they use those old one as a spring that goes ding, ding, ding. <laughs> um, it's pretty much to protect your, your finger, I feel like. 33 feet. Yeah, which one is yours? Is it Bernina? So now I'm going to go zigzag and I'm going to start this. Woo, I'm excited. Let's see. Now I think I put too much tension. Gee. No, I got to cut it and see what's going on. There's something going on with my... Bobbin. No, now we release it. Okay, so starting over, I'm going to go right there and go to the corner, then bring the thread up. And do the few stitches. So I'll do the few stitches. Oh, actually. Let's see. I think, yeah, no, I'm going to do the first stitches just to lock the thread and then go. No, because my teacher, he does first one straight stitch uh, to like trace the drawing and then he goes and does the zigzag over it. But I'm just going to do the zigzag over it right now. You know, and a little wider. I'm going to do, I know you can see a lot there, so I'm going to do it and then show you, okay? Okay. 
Then you just move the hoop with your hands and go. And I'm gonna and do a very tight zigzag. Contouring the drawing. It's very relaxing. <laughs> My embroidery teacher is from Brazil. Look him up. It's called, and actually, Tanya, please post on um, there, write it, because they are not going to know. You guys should go and find him on YouTube. He's incredible. His name is Nico Costa, and it's Nico with the K, N-I-K-O-C-O-S-T-A, Nico Costa. He's genius, and he's so good at teaching. You might not understand Portuguese, but you can see and understand what he's doing. And now he's doing a course on WhatsApp, Tanya. You might want to join. If you uh, or send me a message, I'll hook you up. But there's his WhatsApp number there. You can uh, message him. He's the best. I stayed up until 2 a.m. the other day watching him. Nico Costa, yes. <laughs> watching him uh, embroidering. It's like his magic. Let me just do this pedal and then I'll show you guys. Hold on. Look, oh, it's so cool. Look how it is. So I'm doing, you know, I'm not as good as Nico Costa, but I'm trying. <laughs> and uh, it makes the whole uh, drawing. So I'm going to keep going and then I can come here and cut it. And then that's why when the cutout, you know, just will be like my collar. Let me, I'm going to do this whole thing and then I'll show you. Uh, I'll take it out of the hoop and then show you. Because then you have to move the hoop around the fabric to be able to reach to the other design, the other side of the design. So I grab the fabric, oh, I mean the thread. Can you please repeat the name of the foot you're using? I'm not using a foot right now, but thank you, Alexandra. Yeah, it's darning foot, but I'm doing without a foot. You can do without a foot. Just make sure you don't stitch your finger. Keep your finger away from the foot, which my teacher, he doesn't. He keeps like, he put the <laughs> his finger like right close. I'm like, oh my God, but he's a pro, so... And machines usually come with the darning foot because it's for darning, really. So even the old ones would come with darning foot because they uh, it was for the people, the women in the time, right? Because we're supposed to be the seamstress in the past. But anyway, so people would be able to darn their clothes, like mend their clothes. And so even the Bernina comes with the little hoop, which is the cutest thing. Look. 
and you can and then you put the fabric there's they they say that in the manual they say that is a sock to mend socks how sweet <laughs> Turn around. Yes, it worked. And you know, you have to be patient because it's not like a Nice. Oh, hi, Lucy. <laughs> I am making a collar for, so I'm upcycling a shirt by changing the collar. So I'm embroidering, I copy the collar and I'm embroidering something. And so I'm going to uh, have the call, replace the original collar with this new one that's like this embroidery thing. And I do like to wear glasses because in case the needle breaks. Also, I can see better. <laughs> now the thread breaks, broke. So yeah, do you guys do embroidery at all? Who, which one of you do embroidery? Tell me. So, so there's like two petals left for this flower. I'm going to finish them and then take it out of the hoop, the hoop. So you see the idea of it. Okay. Hi, <laughs> you do. That's awesome. Isn't it fun? <laughs> I don't do much, but I'm getting more into it. I just did like those free motion that I do like drawings. Oh, I think it's a bobbin. But, um, and then I've learned, I'm learning how to do the, co-work and I also want to give like do like colorful ones I never tried those yeah do it do embroidery you know all those things there is some a couple of videos on my uh IGTV where you see I, I show how I do the drawings the drawings are super fun to do because it's quick you just do like one thing and hi Anna Oh, you do hand embroidery. Oh. oh, hi, you're on YouTube. Yeah, guys, if you want to go to YouTube, you're also welcome to go to YouTube. <laughs> Molly, hand embroidery. Yeah, see, hand embroidery, guys, I, kudos to you because I don't have patience for hand embroidery. I like to finish things fast. And hand embroidery oh, takes forever. It's beautiful, but it takes so long. <laughs> The other tip I learned from my, from my professor, my teacher, is that it's good to start the fabric before you embroider. It makes it even better. I 
I'm like my mom now I have to change the glasses when you know <laughs> Oh, the fa yeah, I like make fa making faces. I kind of want to do a face, but somebody already made. I didn't create that, but I'm going to try a little face here on the collar and hands too, which I've seen. Some designer did that. I just want to make it for myself because it sounds fun. And I did, you know, I do stamps with uh, hands and I love to embroider faces, so it makes sense. Uh, what type of fabric and thread are you using? The fabric, oh, the fabric I just cut on old camisole because it has this very nice, it's cotton fabric. And the thread is rayon that I got at Joanne's. 100% rayon fabric. Wendy K. Hi, Wendy. I'm finishing my sleeves while I watch. Oh, you are? Awesome. If you have questions. I tried to make my own trim, but it didn't go well. Using a bunch of bias tape I had for mocking masks. Yeah, uh, anything, if you have bias tape ready, just do it. You'll be super cute too, you know? The thing about, make sure when you wash, I think it's okay. They make pre-washed, right? Because I'm just afraid that it will um, shrink a little, but I think you'll be okay. It's called, It's like already gathered. So the worst that could happen is just like gather a little more. Ali, I love drawing, so would love to incorporate embroidery. Yeah, exactly. This is the thing. I'm not good at drawing, but I like to do weird drawings, and it's so fun. And for some reason, when I'm doing with, if I'm doing cutouts with Caesar, I draw better than if I'm drawing with a pencil. Also, if I'm with the sewing machine, I draw better. My drawings come out better than if I'm drawing with a pencil. It's a mystery. I don't know. Yeah, I start the fabric. So then. In Brazil, we start the fabric. They taught us how, and I remember my grandmother and my mother do, you know, for their doilies and stuff. They put starch mixed with water, uh, baking soda. So they make like a recipe and they starch it. And then this lady also told me that you can do with a soap, a, a, a bar of soap. So you have a cup of water, a bar of soap, and then you dip the soap in water and then put on the fabric put on water, put on the fabric and iron it. And then it gets starched by soap. <laughs> and she's like, and it's good because it will smell like the soap. So careful the soap you use, right? I got this like coconut oil one that's probably not too smelly. Uh, but then I was talking to my sister who actually just joined Hi sister. And she said, yeah, but here we have the spray. It's called the starcher. So I guess at, uh, at the laundry sessions in the market, you find the starter thing is a spray. So you can spray, start it and make it stronger. And then it gets better. You know, the thing about, about um, embroidery, you have to think about it. It's like a needle going through a thing and it's straight, straight. The more straight, you know, the more perpendicular it is, the better result you're going to get. So, and it jams when it's like the fabric gets a little twisted or if the needle gets a little pulled, so that's why we try to stretch the fabric as much as possible in order to, um, because think about it, there's, oh, there's one thing. You got to lower your feed dogs to do that. You know what the feed dogs are? Those little teeth that are under the presser foot on the machine. Those things are the things that pull the fabric. Usually when you're sewing, you see you put the fabric there, the machine pulls the fabric on its own. That is you have to lower so for my machine here most of new machines have a button that you just lower it old machines like this one behind me for instance it's from 1940 or something 30s it has up underneath the machine there's a uh, screw that you unscrew it and then you lower the feed dogs that way you are the one controlling the fabric the machine is not right so then that's why uh, then you have to have like very straight, like straight, like uh, stretched the fabric very, like he says, drum. So then you can uh, embroider well without jamming the, the, the whole thing, the thread and going crazy. <laughs> Hi, I forget your name. Cheaper machines such as mine have a plastic feed dog cover. Oh yeah, that's, it's not really cheaper. Some machines don't have the, the feature, the feature of uh, even the old singers, they have like a very cute cover for the machine, but it's metal then. And then you cover, Julia, yeah, I remember Julia, you got the, 
uh, one of the gift cards, right? So get it going. <laughs> so yeah, you know, a lot of them are uh, have just the same to cover it, which works too. As long as the, the fabric is not being pulled by the machine itself. Oh, you're good, Wendy, then. You're, you're in a good uh, role there. So let's see. I got two more petals on this flower. One more. And guys, in my courses, like in the Remakers and so on, Essential Wardrobe and all, I usually have uh, a camera that shows a close up. It's just when I'm live, I can't do it. But just so you know, then you see better the movement of the needle and all. I should put, have put that one closer today, but. This is so fun. <laughs> to go backwards because the loop is calling them flowers but not necessarily they are flowers. <laughs> it's a garden <laughs> all right let me show you guys get it going <laughs> Does Nico Costa have, yeah, Nico Costa. Uh, try Nico Costa Bordado. He has a YouTube channel. I don't think he has social media. It's just uh, YouTube. Look. And you see how the, let's see if like this, you both can see from both cameras. Um, so this part is where it's gonna go attached to my shirt. And this is the collar. So this, the, those petals uh, are supposed to be hanging here. You know what I mean? So I have to keep going on this. And then when it's time to move, I guess I could move now. Uh, no, I want to do this one first. And then I can move the thing and then I can start cutting. Not an Oscar. <laughs> my stuff is never an Oscar. You know, it's cool. Like people like my clients love work, uh, wearing but it's not like I'm some uh, perfect. I also don't like perfect things. It's boring, you know, so. Unless it's something that you really, really need to. Uh, if you're going to get the Oscar, then you need that per the perfect dress and this and that. But I like things that have like that human touch. I think it's more interesting. I 
I love seeing you guys. If you're if you're in the challenge, by the way, there's also a celebration for the challenge, the end of the challenge. If you were, uh, if you did take the challenge and uh, you haven't been in the group, you should go check the group and see the amazing things that the ladies did, made. And they were already this weekend and it's amazing. I'm really amazed. And I, I look at them and I'm like, oh, that's, the, that's my shirt. But I'm like, no, wait, they made that shirt. <laughs> I'm like extra proud. I swear, I almost cried. I saw it and I'm like, I didn't expect that amount of people making so many amazing. Uh, and then they put their own creations, you know, sometimes. And that was my, my goal, like to, so you understand how sometimes it doesn't turn out so perfect, but then you can always keep working on it and then you can fix it. This, I learned from a friend of mine who's a very talented uh, artist, like fine artist. He can draw amazing stuff. And he said to me once, if your drawing is not good yet, you just keep working on it. It's going to be better, <laughs> you know. So I take that to heart and I keep making and I like to pass that to you guys. Exactly. When things are made by hand, it's cool because it's original. Hello, Anya. <laughs> I like your name. This design is going to be like a, I'm calling it like a garden because it's not perfect. It's just like a flower. It's sort of like flower petals around the collar. I'll post on Instagram when I finish it. There is no, exactly, Linda. Hi, Linda. Thank you for joining. It's no, nothing's perfect, right? Like, think about it. I really like someone who made the blouse that looks work professional. You mean like it looks like it was professionally made? I... Like, you know, I teach that. That's how I do. And I I sell my clothes and they're not cheap. Uh, I try to do a good finishing, well ironed, and then it looks professionally made. But it's there's always like that touch that it's like somebody made it. It's not a factory. I know in a factory are people making too, obviously, but they make in series right like so they make everyone does they do first this 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 is like many many pieces they just do the cuff and then move so it doesn't have that work on each piece it's not one of a kind it's not one and they make like five thousand And tomorrow I might make a post and share all the, the creations that girls made because it's beautiful. They can wear it to work. Yeah, that's true. It's uh, and that comes to the fabric too. If there's if the fabric is nice, um, and you made it well, you make well made. You iron it well. You can work. sewing backwards it's fun it's weird but it works and it's all about moving the loop
with my thread broke. You guys good over there? What time is it? Oh, it's almost, we've been here almost an hour. Okay, I'll finish this one real quick. What's going on? Oh, see, that happens and it drives me crazy. The thread twists on its own and it's <laughs> it tangles and it goes, now it's good. That's why it broke. Okay. This machine is really good, Jen, you were right. It's really doing what I needed to do, it's insane. <laughs> and it's like, so I asked in the group of the Bernina people what was the best one to do that. And they are like record, right? You know, they like the, the more common ones, but this, this is one, no one talks about it, the thousand. And it, guess what, she's the best. It's a great machine. <laughs> I think it's a rotary hook that makes this uh, quality. And you know, the bobbin is plastic. Which is so strange. Ooh. And she's fast too. Look. I'm going to put glasses because I'm scared. <laughs> And it's only shaking because my table is shaking. It's not the machine. Okay, we got one more paddle. definitely not an Oscar because the stitch is like I'm still learning <laughs> I'm still uh, practicing how to do that this kind of stuff and I think when it's the real co-work you're supposed to do twice the zigzag you stitch over twice lift see I forgot the foot yeah but this machine is so insane that it doesn't even 
matter if the thing was down. It's insane. This is the mach the Bernina. It's a vintage Bernina from probably from the 90s, right, Jenny, or from the 80s. It's the Bernina 1000 Special. I got off of Marketplace from a lady who was selling somewhere in New York. Uh, Paola. I'm super excited to see the finished product. Never knew I could do that with my machine. You can. That's the thing. No one thinks about that. And, you know, the machine is just, all machines do that. And if you look, okay, so if you got my email today and I was talking about this book that I got, which I'm crazy and I left in the other room, is a uh, embroidery book. Uh, it's, the singer, it's the singer company that made an a book about embroidery. And it's from the 20s. And if you see the stuff that people were able to do in the 1920s with like a regular machine, just like this one, look, Instagram, I'm going to show you that one uh, that's super simple and it's only straight stitch. It's crazy, like uh, Venetian lace and all sorts of lace. They would embroider like wool pieces and um, uh, mesh things or you can do on, on tool, you know, on Etsy. If you go on Etsy, you find cotton tool for sale. That's early 90s, yeah, I think. And so if you get that tool, you can embroider, and then you can put this stabilizer underneath. This one melts away when you wet, when you put in water. So you can put tool and put this underneath, put in the hoop and embroider, and then put in water, and this is going to melt. And then you have that, you know how, uh, and this is what the, the guys from India do on YouTube. You can see they do like uh, wedding dresses, there is a reason why wedding dresses are expensive because people are embroidering uh, crazy. Or like, you know, in a Dior maison, they would do by hand. They put on a big like loop and the women are there all like in white suits and stuff and they're embroidering each piece, but it's like a million bucks. But then if you want to make something at home for an Oscar, <laughs> then you can do a uh, like that with your regular machine. All machines do that, all. You really have, I am crazy and I have a bunch of machines. So I keep like testing uh, and I realized this one is the best, but it, I've done with all sorts of machines, especially like simple things. If you do just one line, you're good. Okay. So here it is. I'm going to take it out of the hoop now. I'm not going to cut it yet because I need to keep working on it. And if I cut, I don't have, I don't have room to put my hoop, right? But this is it. Look, I know it looks strange now, but you see when it's on the on the because uh, you'd be like this, right? So the collar, something like this, and I'll definitely post on Instagram. I won't post tomorrow because I have to go to New York, and uh, so I won't be sewing tomorrow. But next week I'll finish it and then post it. I really want to finish this one. See, it would be like this. Oh, here. Right? So I'll cut it around. Because it's zigzagged so tight, it's already sealed. Sealed, <laughs> finished, right? So I can just come with the scissors and cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. And then I have this like floral design over my shirt. And then I'm thinking that I'm going to do some crazy faces with the line embroidering all over the shirt. And, um, and then I have a crazy shirt. <laughs> and I think this one with the, the embroidery, I'm going to have a class in, in the remakers for embroidery. So, Paola, like, you are in the re remakers, right? So, um, and this is the other thing. I'm going to ask you guys to vote for our next projects and all. Watch for your email tomorrow. We're going to start talking about the, the next projects. You know, each uh, every month we do a new project, right? And I think one should be embroidery because it's a great way to upcycle, guys. I've done so many things. I didn't paint. Uh, I'll take like a pair of pants that are really nice. I even have my, my customer who is, uh, what's her name? She's from the Upper East Side in New York. And she would be, uh, it's not Heather. I love Heather too. Heather used to be from the, West, now she's on the east side. Uh, Samantha, that's her. And she bought one, I never forget because she bought uh, those wool pants. So I found those like wool slacks that I think they're probably men's, but they're like woman size. 
and uh you know the shape was like it wasn't like too like uh weird because <laughs> some remember in the 90s how we used to wear those like men's suits and stuff and it was kind of strange this one was a good one but it was 100 percent wool and then i did those line drawings all over the pants and she loved it and she bought it and she wear it and she sends me pictures and so you know it's a it's an awesome way to upcycle because it was a pair of pants that were done they were dying at the thrift store and i got it and i do the drawing and that's it and then i can even share uh, drawings with you guys i have like collections of books and stuff there is uh things you can download there's uh what do you call that you know when it's free to use uh, a bunch of things you can use to draw and, and do designs with embroidery and it's all you need is trade right so it's not like a big investment it takes time there's faster ways so i think one month in remakers we should do how to upcycle with embroidery okay <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Linda. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, this is going to be cool. Uh, I really recommend. Try, guys. Give a shot. It's Sometimes it can feel scary, so make sure you put the darning foot on your machine. And mostly machines have the darning foot, or it's called, also called free motion embroidery foot. Ladies usually use that for quilting. And you find it everywhere. It's very common. Just look for the ones for your sewing machine. And that's it. All right. And if you want to join us, go to my bio and sign up for Remakers. There is a payment plan. Or you can pay up front with a discount. And it closes on Tuesday. So don't, don't leave it for last minute. Go ahead and do it. And I'm not going to let you. Last time, there were people like, oh, Vanya, please let me go in. No, because when we close, it's like... You know, everything has limits. <laughs> we close, we close. And then I have this whole group and we're going to work together until next time. So, and I don't know, like last time was like three months ago. So next time will be a few, a few months later. Okay. I'm just being honest with you guys. I'm not trying to push. I already have a bunch of people that signed up. I'm extra happy. It's amazing. Uh, so, you know, it's not like I'm not trying to push and sell. I'm just saying it is a very good opportunity. It's going to be fun. We're going to make projects every month. You're going to make a lot of, uh, and you can put your creativity. And there's the whole course that was already sold for the same price, and it's included. So you can take your whole year to create your own uh, slopers, your own size. I teach you how to do. I teach all my hacks, how to make clothes, how to transform basic. So sloper is a basic pattern, right? You take your measurements, and then there is a diagram there that you draw, and then you make your own size uh, sloper. And then, and then you have that, a shirt, a skirt, and a pair of pants that are your base made to your size. And then from there, you can. I, uh, there's a lot of videos where I show you how to uh, transform those. For instance, you want like a tank top. Then you take your base and make a tank top. Or you want a puff sleeve. I teach you how to make the puff sleeve. And I'm not, like a, I'm not a pattern maker. It's not an Oscar. <laughs> so I'm really teaching my hacks, okay? Because this kind of stuff, you take your whole life to learn with you know fashion school and all no i learned every day my everyday life and i had to because i had a shop in new york i don't know if you know that for years and years and i had to come up with things and make it i still have to come up with things <laughs> because i sell but i sell online now before my store every friday i had to drop new stuff and um for a while i was the only one working i had just one girl working in my store and i was from my house when i first started right i had a tiny little shop Later on, I had seamstress and all. But when it was just me, I had, and that was, that's how I learned a lot of upcycling. I would go to this uh, place in Bushwick. It's like a, a junk shop where they sell by the, clothes by the pound. So I would go there, buy clothes by the pound, choose the natural fabric ones, and then transform them into new things. Because it's, first off, it's sustainable, the most important reason. The other thing is it, you, you're saving from the landfill. And it's affordable. And you can find really amazing quality fabrics and transform into something new that you can use to work. You can make like very well-made, like new. I had customers from all over the world shopping my stuff. Until now, they talk about it. And, you know, I, uh, Christina Ricci was my client. Even Leonardo DiCaprio went to my store. Okay, guys, I wasn't there that day, but he went there. <laughs> so, you know, I know how to do those things. And I'm. it's like 
30 years of experience, not with upcycling and clothing. I have like about 10 years of making clothing really experience, right? But all my hacks that I learned in the United States, and I'm very like connected and I know what's going on, I'm giving to you for very cheap, if you think about it. If you take like a ceramic class, it's like 400 bucks a month. This price I'm sharing this course with, this whole program, it's like a whole year, okay? enough of pitching <laughs> but take uh just go ahead and join us okay close on tuesday all righty and if you have questions message me i know sometimes you're like but vanya i'm like that can i do it send me a message either my email vanya at wardrobeschool.com vanya you know how to spell v-a-n-i-a at wardrobeschool.com or just go to my dm on instagram send me a dm and I will respond to you and help you and make sure that you're doing the right thing. Oh, and on top of that, it's uh, there is a, uh, what do you call Money back thing. So if you don't like it, you can go the whole course. So an essential wardrobe is open. You can go watch the whole thing and call me and be like, I don't like it. And then I'll give your money back within seven days of your sign up. Okay. So you have, you can even try and, uh, and if you don't like, you're like, you don't know how to teach this. Then I'll give your money back. I don't care. I already have other students. And this is for you, for you to learn. I already know, guys. This is really for you to learn how to do. And so more people do uh, handmade stuff. You can sell. You can create a brand. This, if you're trying to create a brand, that's the best way because you make a few batches. You test and you're not investing your life with some uh, fashion company, some production company. No, you just start a few pieces. You put on the market, you put online, and guess what? Inside the Remakers, there's this bonus where I teach you how to do that because I've sold millions in clothes. And so I know how to do it. And as you know, I know how to do online stuff too, you know, marketing and stuff. So I'm sharing with you. It's all in there. You can have access to it, okay? Have a wonderful night. You guys that did the... Uh, now the videos were up for the challenge. And it's going away. And but I think it's enough. You already done all your everyone finished, right? <laughs> next time we'll do something else. Eventually I'll ask you guys what do you want to learn? And then we'll do the next workshop or challenge or something. Okay, but now it's done. I'm really, really like over the moon with the results, with how you guys made everything. And tomorrow I'll ask permission for the girls if I can share the shirts and I'll put a post on Instagram to show all of the shirts that, that they made because it's really impressive. Okay, have a wonderful night. And uh, yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio, can you believe it? I wasn't there, I wasn't uh, in Manhattan that day. I was having lunch in Manhattan and the girl called me like, guess who is here? He showed up there with, uh, he, I don't know if he still does that, but he used to go around with um, a helmet and the city bikes and like a bunch of friends. And he showed up and I said, oh, let's stop at the store. And whoever was working there, said to him are you Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> and he's like yes <laughs> and I love him and I'm like oh my god and I wasn't and they called me that they were he was already gone you know he just browsed around it was a woman's clothes store I don't, how many girlfriends he has I don't know he didn't buy anything but Christina Ricci did she bought two dresses and she had me you can google my store is called La Vie Maria and she the cool thing about that is that she she's very petite right so she's like you got to crop this, short, this dress in half. So I had to make it shorter for her. And so she got two dresses. And it was awesome because she was getting engaged that time, that month. And so, and she told me, she's like, I'm going to wear this dress to this event in LA. And the event turns out was, I don't know what it was, but she told the public that day, she made the public that she was getting engaged. And then it was all over the news and she was wearing my dress. <laughs> So if you Google that, Christina Ricci gets engaged and you look at, uh, see the dress that she's wearing, like it's like a um, ethnic print kind of dress. Very simple. Uh, that's my dress. Okay. So, um, okay. That was my, why am I saying that? I don't know. I'm just proud, right? Because look, I came from nowhere in Brazil and I made it. <laughs> and I'm telling you that I can help you do it too. Okay, guys. Have a wonderful night. I'll see you next uh live probably like uh next week or something i'll do a live i have to go to new york this week but then i'll be back in the studio again i'm actually moving back to new york slowly i'm gonna grab a bunch of stuff 
some sewing machine to put in the car and take to New York because I'm going to move my studio there soon. Okay? Have a wonderful night. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I know, Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy. Yeah, the, the girls are absolutely great. Good night. Ciao.